The South Today Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with MOLMAP, the skin cancer detection specialists. On the south today, a Kiwi aviation legend flies high in Wanaka for one last time as mourners bid a final farewell to Sir Tim Wallace. A group of Dunedin athletes showcase sheer determination, running laps up and down the world's steepest street. And South Otago welcomes hundreds of mud-loving motorbike riders for an annual trail ride. Kia ora, good evening. I'm Hannah Wilkins. A large crowd turned up to say their final goodbyes to aviation legend Sir Tim Wallace over the weekend in Wanaka, with many pilots taking to the skies for a flyover to honour his legacy. A fitting send-off for a Kiwi aviation icon. A large crowd of family, friends and colleagues gathered at Wanaka Airport on Saturday to mourn the loss of prominent southern businessman Sir Tim Wallace. He died in his hometown earlier this month, aged 85. Around 2,000 people filled the Alpine helicopter's hangar for the funeral service, many more paying their respects through a live stream online. Sir Tim's eight grandchildren were tasked with carrying his casket to the venue, with his family and friends taking to the stage to share some fond memories in their eulogies. The founder of the popular Warbirds of Awanaka Ayrshire was also a major figure in the establishment of New Zealand's venison industry and was a director of more than two dozen companies. Members of the Royal New Zealand Air Force performed an aerial, followed by more than 20 helicopters which made several circuits of the Wanaka airfield. Sir Tim's coffin was loaded into one of the helicopters and taken away, joining the fleet in the skies for one final flight above his hometown. At Wanaka, the South Today. A truck towing a tree chipper suffered a mishap just north of Dunedin on Monday morning, with the trailer flipping and ending up in a ditch. The tree chipper was being towed on a trailer and landed on its side after coming off the northern motorway at Pigeon Flat on Monday morning. No one was injured in the incident. The road was placed under traffic management while the accident was cleaned up, but vehicles were still able to travel freely in both directions. Wind, rain and snow flurries didn't keep a group of community-minded athletes off the streets as they showed off their endurance for charity. A Dunedin fitness club scaled the steep Baldwin Street more than 500 times last week in an effort to raise funds and awareness for suicide prevention. Extremely cold weather adding to the challenge of running up what's billed as the world's steepest street. Members of Dunedin's Snap Fitness braved the snow and sleet on Friday, running laps of Baldwin Street for the charity I Am Hope New Zealand. It's part of a wider fundraiser for Gumboot Friday, with the fitness buffs committing to running a lap of Baldwin Street for every person lost to suicide in New Zealand in the past year. It said that nine people attempt suicide in New Zealand a day, so we're trying to come together as a collective and set ourselves a challenge. SNAP Fitness Club manager Nadia Buchanan says the country's suicide statistics are alarming. The members taking time to reflect on their own experiences with mental health. It's something that we all need to talk about more, you know, talking about it, creating opportunities to open up that conversation um, helps people, it helps people get help. Runners managed 538 laps of the steepest street and are still taking donations online at the I Am Hope website. In Dunedin, the South Today. A coalition of Palestinian activist groups took to the Dunedin streets over the weekend as the Israeli-Palestine conflict continues to escalate. Hundreds of activists gathered at the Otago Museum Reserve on Saturday, waving Palestinian flags as they marched towards the octagon. The protest action was in response to ongoing Israeli military action, which followed attacks by Hamas militants earlier this month. 
Marches called for a ceasefire in Gaza, while Foreign Minister Nanaya Mahuta says civilians had suffered disproportionately in the conflict. The protest was one of a number held across the country, organised by the Palestine Solidarity Network Aotearoa and Justice for Palestine. Dunedin City Councillor Marie Lafiso joined the Palestinian community leader Dr Mai Tamimi at the rally in a speech urging diplomatic solution to the deadly conflict. Yummy food and fun activities were enjoyed in Queenstown over the weekend as the annual Wakatsipu Community Presbyterian Church Fair numbers started to recover. Clear skies bustling people and the smell of barbecue were all on order last Saturday as Queenstown St Margaret's Church hosted their annual spring fair. The warm day helped draw hundreds of locals alongside family members of the church, the biggest turnout they've had since the COVID-19 pandemic. A variety of food stalls catered to different tastes. Younger fair goers enjoyed the bouncy castle and games, while others browsed the items at the silent auction and art gallery. The 28-year-old event brings together the different congregations from across central Otago. Congregation in our town, congregation, two old congregations in Queenstown, it's in Andrews, and one here, two here. So it's a time to work together, get to know people. The money raised from the fair will go towards helping run the church, as well as funding their two missionaries currently in Nepal and Vanuatu. In Queenstown, the South Today. Keen motorbike riders made their way to South Otago over the weekend, flicking up mud left, right and centre through forestry and farmland. Their new Lake to the Sea trail ride attracted hundreds to Melbourne, bringing the community together to fundraise for some local youngsters. Riders roaring into the forest as they head off on the Lake to Sea motorbike trail. The ride was held for its 20th year on Saturday. More than 700 motorcyclists taking on the 140 kilometre trail from Milburn to the Toko River mouth. People came from as far as Christchurch to take part in the trail ride, with all funds raised from the event going to Toko Marrero High School. For the benefit of our children, um, and it's a great community based uh, organisation where everybody comes and gives a hand. I love it. Organiser Brian Griffin says the annual event gets a fire going in him and he enjoys watching riders of all ages have a great time driving the trail. He also loves the community aspect of the day with volunteers coming together to help him get the event up and running. I love seeing motorcyclists having a good time. Um, I love seeing the community come together to help us and I love seeing the kids uh, have a good time as well. Griffin received the Paul Harris Fellowship Award for his efforts in hosting the event. Despite this, he's hoping to pass on the torch in the future to let someone else run the ride, although reckons he's keen to continue for at least one more year. In Melbourne, the South Today. FIR Kine, still to come on the South Today. Queenstown lights up for a colourful Indian celebration and soft toys of all shapes and sizes leave their young owners for a special sleepover. Great Britain has a collection of varied landscapes and countryside to rival anywhere else in the world. And the best way to see it is to walk. Such a sweet girl. What are you dreaming about? This music. Of dreams by Honda. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life.
A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Here at Age Concern Otago, we offer a range of services to support Otago seniors to age well with dignity and independence. We provide social work support, visiting service, health promotion and social activities. Check out what we have on offer at ageconcernotago.com. Earth is a planet of extremes. Extreme places and extreme animals. But some animals are more extreme than others. Join us as we count down to find the most unusual, the most extraordinary, the most extreme. Tēnā welcome back. India's biggest and most important holiday of the year was celebrated in central Otago over the weekend. More than 1,500 people celebrated the Queenstown Diwali Festival with the event centre shining in vibrant colours. Dazzling lights and performers showing off their skills as the 7th annual Diwali Festival gets underway at the Queenstown Event Centre. Saturday's event saw around 1,500 people from across the country attend and participate in the Indian celebration, alongside enjoying a plate full of traditional food. Performers of all ages and cultures were up on stage showing off their moves, with a mix of unique song and dance from a variety of countries around the globe. This year saw New Zealand's first sustainable Diwali celebration. With food and drink served on paper dishes, and people asked to bring their own containers for take-home doggy bags. Diwali is India's largest annual celebration, and is seen as the winning of light over dark and good over evil. In Queenstown, the South Today. Two central Otago libraries were the scene of some mischief and mayhem over the weekend as a gathering of local soft toys got up to some fun. The great Teddy sleepover saw young owners dropping off beloved toys of all shapes and sizes to spend a night in the library, but it seems there was little time for sleep. All tucked in with their friends and ready for a night among the books. Yep. Cromwell and Alexandra Libraries welcomed an influx of fluffy visitors on Friday for the great Teddy sleepover. Local children were encouraged to drop off their special furry friends to the libraries and leave them there for the night. The soft toys including teddy bears, unicorns and a pirate. I they'll read, they might play jigsaw, um, they'll might play with the musical instruments that so we've got some of the musical instruments so they may have a little bit of song time as well to help with being apart from their friends the children were kept updated about the overnight shenanigans of their toys with library staff posting live teddy cams on their facebook page the toys competed in sack racing around the bookshelves and trying their hand at librarian duties with Constable Ted trying to keep the group in line. Do you want to stay the beat and I can't see her? Did they stay at the library last night? Yeah, and I, and I can't see the one. Their young human owners were happy to pick them up again on Saturday morning, welcoming back their teddies with big hugs and some morning tea. In Alexandra, the South today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Thousands farewell to aviation legend Sir Tim Wallace and Wanaka on Saturday, finishing with a fitting aerial flyover. A Dunedin fitness group braved the cold temperatures, scaling Baldwin Street over 500 times for suicide awareness. And hundreds of motorbike riders revved up their wheels in South Otago for the community's Lake to the Sea Trail ride. And now we'll look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT and we welcome editor Paul McIntyre. Hello Paul. Hi, how are you? I'm very well, how are you? Good, thank you. That's good. What can we expect to read in the papers? Well, right? we've got uh, Otago Uni students living in Christchurch uh, coming down to Dunedin may well be taking the train one day. Mm. Uh, they're looking at a study uh, sponsored by the Uni and the Council and look into the possibility of doing that. Mm -hmm. Got a group of pupils from Otago Boys High have got the boot from the boarding school after oh. a boozy post-rugby match 
function turn chaotic. Right. We're also featuring a Dunedin grandmother who takes Halloween very seriously. <laughs> and we travel to Albania, not literally, which has <laughs> undiscovered delights. All right. Well, we look forward to reading. Thank you for sharing this evening, Paul. Cheers. Time now for a look at the weather. The South Today weather, proudly brought to you by MoreMap, the skin cancer detection specialists. Looking at the situation, it'll be fine for a few days with high cloud and northerly winds, but some showers will develop over the region later in the week. Heading to the top of the South Island. High cloud and light winds through here tomorrow with 18 expected in Nelson, 19 over in Greymouth and 17 with breezy northeasterlies in Christchurch. Travelling to South Canterbury and North Otago. Well, the high cloud continues as we move down here with northeasterlies and warm temperatures. It'll get up to 19 in Ashburton, 18 for Timaru and Awamaru's looking good too with a 17 degree high. Heading westwards through the central lakes, a gorgeous spring day through here tomorrow with some high cloud and light winds with 20 degrees in both Wanaka and Alexandra, while Queenstown is just behind with a high of 18. Heading further south, northwesterlies make themselves known through here with 18 degree highs in Gore and Balclutha and up to 17 with northerlies in the Catlins. Across to Invercargill, fine and cool tonight as it drops to 4. The next two days will be warm with 18 or 19 degree highs, along with plenty of sunshine, northerlies and high cloud at times. And finally heading to Dunedin, it'll be breezy but fine tonight with a low of 10 degrees. Tomorrow brings a sunny morning, cloudy afternoon and a breeze throughout with a 17 degree high. Then Wednesday starts misty with low clouds before a fine 16 degree day with high clouds and southerlies. And that's the news this Monday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. You can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand, or follow us on Facebook. Search for The South Today NZ to see our favourite stories from around the regions. We'll see you again tomorrow. Ka kite o popo. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air. The South Today Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with MOLMAP, the skin cancer detection specialists.